Europe Commander-in-Chief General Crosby Saint. My fellow soldiers of the U.S. Army in Europe, there's no doubt that we are in the midst of exciting times in Europe. The wall has multiple holes in it. The reunification process of Germany is in full swing. The Soviets are withdrawing a portion of their forces and talks are underway to conclude a conventional force reduction in Europe agreement. Communism truly is on the run. and We hope they'll soon leave town. Now you and your predecessors have personally contributed to this success in gaining the upper hand in the Cold War. You have every right to be proud. These are exciting times for all of us. And for me, I'm glad to be here in Europe at this particular point in time, and I know you are also. But with all this great news, we also have some challenges which will face each of us next year. It is that challenge that I will address today. Here's the situation. We have real resource reductions facing us, but luckily to date we've been able to absorb the reductions. But if these anticipated budget reductions come to pass in the coming years, and the disarmament reduction talks are successful, two things will occur. First, within the next five years, the U.S. Army will grow smaller. Second, the U.S. Army in Europe will be smaller, not all at once, but the process of reduction will have begun. It's against this backdrop that today I am joined by the top Army leadership of the U.S. Army component in the European Command. We have collectively decided that it's appropriate to address you directly keep you informed about the situation as we know it. You know these commanders here with me as professional and caring. They are problem solvers. They are trainers. And so our purpose today is to respond to some of the most commonly asked questions by you. In addition, I want to assure you that your Army leadership cares, is aware of the uncertainty, and is prepared to respond to you with the facts as they come available. So without further ado, Let's get to the heart of the most commonly asked questions today. Sergeant Gill, what are the soldiers asking? Well, General Saint, they certainly have a whole lot of questions, and we'll get to some of those questions. First, let me introduce uh, the commanders that you've brought with you. First, we have the Deputy Commander-in-Chief, General John Charlie Koshvili, the Fifth Corps Commander, General George Jalwin. We also have the Seventh Corps Commander here, General Frederick Franks. Also, the commander of the 21st Theater Army Area Command, General William Flynn, and the user command sergeant major, George Horvath. General, to begin the questioning, what's the plan for reducing the Army? Clearly, these reductions are coming. Well, you're correct. It probably will come, uh, especially with regard to the budget, when you consider that and the force reductions. And the plan is that, first <coughs> off, we're going to take uh, units out as opposed to individuals. Uh, second, we're very carefully trying to figure out what is the residual force, what does it look like, where it should be stationed, and then the sequence of events that would take place so that we can make sure that we take care of the people and as well as protect the interests of the United States. Uh, we have begun a plan. It has not been approved. And of course, until it's approved by Washington, then actually we're going to have to wait and see what the situation, how it turns out. Now, you can't make any decision until the, some kind of conventional force reduction agreement has been concluded. And so I guess we're working on the problem right now, being some. Sir, what will the reductions mean to me as a soldier in use? Should I stay in the Army? I think that's a very important question, and every soldier is probably asking that about now because of what they read in the newspaper. So John one of the Fifth Corps commanders, has been paying a lot of attention to that because his soldiers have been asking him that question. Let's ask him. Sir, well, I think first of all, like you mentioned in your opening remarks, that uh, the reductions in Europe are coming because I think we've had great success here. NATO and the United States have won a, a great victory. And that victory has come because the soldier has walked his post along with his predecessors for the past 45 years. And after every victory, we have ha taken a reduction in our military force, and this is not going to be any exception. Uh, but I think most, of, most important is the challenge that we do it right. Now, General Saint has charged us with, as we go through this reduction, to identify the best billets, the best housing for our families, the best medical, educational, recreational facilities for our troops. So a reduction can mean to this smaller army that's going to stay in Europe a better quality of life, <coughs> better medical facilities for our families. We can get all our families in government housing uh, we can have hang on to the best training areas so 
in many respects it can be a more exciting, challenging, and fun place than it is now. Uh, but the challenge is to do it right. And the biggest piece of that is to keep the best soldiers in, in Europe. And so the second part of your question, should I, should, I, should I stay in the Army, I would say if you're good enough. If you're committed, if you're dedicated to serve your country, stay in the Army. If you've got what it takes to maintain and attain high standards, stay in the Army. Because our mission with preserving peace and freedom is going to continue here in Europe. So if you're good enough, stay Army and stay in the United States Army in Europe. Sir, if we talk about these reductions, what about the future of the officer corps? How will they be affected? Well, they will be affected because the Army is going to get smaller and then the officer corps is going to have to reduce proportionally. And I know that General Shalley here has been working on that question, and I'd like to ask him to answer it for us. Well, as you just said, sir, it's a future of an officer corps that's smaller, but quality-wise, I am absolutely convinced, uh, as good or better than today. Uh, it will be an officer corps uh, with opportunities for promotion, for uh, challenging assignments, for schooling, will be every bit as good as they are today. Uh, you see, since the officer corps will be reduced in proportion to the rest of the Army, and to the best of the Army's ability, these reductions will be taken across all ranks, then such things as uh, uh, selection rates, as pin-on times, uh, will be by and large the same as they are today, at least for the next uh, couple of years or so. And so uh, I will tell you that despite all the gloom and doom that we occasionally read about. I think that the army of tomorrow, the smaller, high-quality army, will be every bit as exciting as uh, mm -hmm. it is today. And so uh, I would certainly encourage all those top-notch officers that we have today uh, to remain part of that army. But I also have to say that uh, since we're reducing the army, that those officers who feel less competitive and uh, less capable of dealing with the smaller, uh, highly quali high quality army, that those officers probably ought to consider uh, uh, opportunities in civilian life. But for those who stay, uh, I feel the future is great because after all, where else do you have the opportunity to lead our great young soldiers? Thank you. General, how will we leave Europe as units with our equipment or and, uh, will any soldiers be given the pink slip? Well, I think uh, that question is something that's going to take a long time to figure out in great detail. Uh, but I'd like to hand that football to the 7th Corps Commander, uh, General Franks, and ask him to answer it for you. I think uh, a couple words here uh, that we are operative. Uh, one is pride. We've already talked about that. Uh, pride because uh, there are great signs all around us that what we came over here to do, that we've been successful doing it. More enduring peace with freedom. Uh, our uh, conditions are, are happening in Eastern Europe now that will make uh, more enduring peace with freedom in the future. I think secondly, uh, a sense of thanks and appreciation to our soldiers, civilians, and family members whose dedicated service, whose uh, great sacrifices, sense of duty, readiness, uh, have helped to, as part of NATO to make these current conditions uh, possible. So we, we will leave with a sense of pride and a sense of appreciation uh, to our soldiers. We'll leave with, as units, as battalion units, with unit integrity, we'll leave with appropriate uh, ceremonies to exhibit that pride and that thanks uh, to our soldiers uh, and to our units. The equipment, uh, the equipment will uh, either stay here in Europe to fill current shortages uh, or be uh, returned to the United States. Uh, Sergeant Gill, we live as guest in a host country and all this reduction is going to take a period of time so we don't want to rush out and say to our good german friends we're leaving town see you later alligator that kind of thing uh, we've got very good relationships we need to keep them informed and we need to maintain the relationships that we've taken some 40 years to foster between the two countries now i know that down in seventh corps they've been working very hard at that and just before the show, General Franks and I were talking about that. So I'd like to ask him to add his little perspective to that. Well, thanks, sir. You know, the rumors are rampant also in our, among our local national workforce and among the German communities uh, where, where we live and work. And so we also have an important responsibility to provide the right information to our local national workforce who also contribute to our readiness and to our German friends 
in the communities where we live. So again, it's a chain of command, tactical chain of command to our soldiers and family members and to our community chain of command so that we keep our local national workforce and our German friends in uh, communities well informed and ahead of time before a major announcement. General, when it comes time to leave, will it cost me if I have to go? Suppose I have an agreement like a, a loan or a, a housing lease or perhaps DPP payments. Will that be affected some way? I don't think we really know all of the answers to that, but uh, I know that General Flynn of the 21st ACOM, uh, he's had that question asked him quite a few times by his soldiers, and so let me let him respond. Bill? First thing I'd like to say is that we're going to take care of our soldiers in all the situations I'm going to mention. First, as far as leases that our soldiers may have uh, downtown on the economy. We don't anticipate any of our soldiers paying many money at all out of their pocket to break these leases. Uh, the leases that have been reviewed and made at our housing referral offices and at our legal assistance offices contain a military clause. That clause indicates that uh, you can break the lease in the event of military orders. And our soldiers should have sufficient time to notify their landlord uh, to make sure that they can get out without any adverse uh, as far as dollars out of their pocket. Uh, as far as car and bank loans are concerned, uh, most of the banks uh, that we have and the credit unions uh, allow them to transfer their accounts back to the states if they move. Uh, there are some banks that don't allow that. Uh, in that in that particular case, uh, we would suggest that the soldier take out another loan, which is transferable back to a stateside location, take that money and put that money and pay off the original loan. And uh, the key to this is uh, seeing the legal assistance officer and we can take care of it. As far as uh, the delayed payment plan or layaway plans at APHES, uh, any uh, delayed payment plan accounts are, with APHES are automatically uh, transferable to the states. As far as uh, layaway is concerned, uh, you can either pay it off, get the goods right away, or you can uh, uh, cancel it and get full a payment back from APHES. We have no problem with that at all. Uh, the bottom line, though, is that uh, we're talking mainly uh, about in generalities right now. You're going to have specific instances with each soldier. And the one word of caution is get to your friendly legal assistance officer if you have any problems at all. But the key, again, is the underline the chain of command is going to take care of those soldiers in these areas. Thank you, sir. Uh, Charlie, before you go on, let me add one thing, because as I was sitting listening to uh, General Flynn, it dawned on me that if I was a soldier, I would say, uh, is this going to happen tomorrow morning? I mean, do I have to rush out and do something? Because <coughs> the way you've asked the questions, we've sort of addressed them directly. But I think necessarily I need to make sure everybody understands nothing's going to happen tomorrow morning. There hadn't been any agreement signed yet. It's going to be an orderly transition from one size army to another. We're going to do it over a longer period of time. People are going to have the opportunity to make a lot of choices as we go along. So they're not going to get up in the morning and go to work and have the first sergeant hand them a pink slip. And so you need to stay cool, which is what our soldiers are real good at. Right, sir, because when you get up and read the paper <laughs> the next day, that's you right. know, and you think, well, goodness, I guess I better pack my stuff because we're heading out of here tomorrow. The yeah, job it feels is, that way sometimes. The job is not over. Okay, very good. Uh, let's move on, if we can, to PCS freezes. Will there be a PC PCS freeze? And uh, how about a promotion freeze? Well, those are tough questions also. and. Uh, let me ask General Jawan to sort of give the flavor of what's going on down in his corps. Well, with the best information uh, that we have available right now, there is uh, no PCS freeze uh, contemplated by the Army. Uh, let me also say that, that there's no reduction in force plan for this year, uh, nor are there any early out plan for this year. And to the best information that we have, promotions will continue. So as General Saint says, nothing's going to happen in the short term. Uh, it's going to be a long-term process, but soldiers should relax in, in all those areas. No PCS freeze, no RIF this year, and no early outs, and promotions will continue. Okay. General Singh, we are hearing a lot of this, and, and going back again to the things that the rumors are rampant. I mean, you go across the, the street to the snack bar, and some guys say, you must be leaving tomorrow. I mean, how, where do you go to get the correct information? Well, I think uh, you need to go to the most reliable source, the person who cares about you, and that's your leader. And so I know that down in 7th Corps, they're very conscious of the leadership and the growth and who's responsible. And so I'm going to ask General Flank, Franks to give a little, uh, few words on that. I, I think, uh, sir, you, you said the, the words we all want to reinforce. That is chain of command. 
chain of command is responsible for mission readiness and taking care of our soldiers, civilians, uh, and family members. And so the chain of command has the right information. There are a lot of rumors. Rumors are uh, dangerous when people start acting on them. And so uh, soldiers ought to turn to the chain of command to have the right information about what's going on. There's also an obligation on the part of the chain of command to use the available sources of information to find out so they can inform their soldiers. Our soldiers want to talk about these things so they can have sessions with their soldiers, squads, crews, platoons, and talk about these things and answer their legitimate questions and feed those questions back up through the chain of command that they can't answer. So just as in a tactical operation, we have crosstalk between commanders uh, and teamwork going on. So we can do this, as General Saint said, in an orderly manner and soldiers aren't worried about reading something in the newspaper and having to act on it. And, and of course there is a, a certain amount of uncertainty out there. What about the NCOs? What should they be telling their soldiers? What information should they be passing on to their soldiers? Well, I think that's a great question for our top NCO and you, sir, Command Sergeant Major Horvath. George, are you there? I'm, <laughs> sir, I'm here. Um, I'd like to go, I'd like to kick it off by saying, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to echo what the Commander-in-Chief has said and what General Frank said. Uh, and that the number one guy and the, and the sole source of information for a soldier should be his sergeant or that leader. Uh, and that's the guy uh, or the gal that he or she should turn to. Um, but what should the sergeants be telling the soldiers? I think, uh, as you've heard all the commanders talk so far about uh, that most of the questions have been answered, now we're going to come to what does the sergeant got to say. I think the sergeants need to continue to focus, tell their soldiers that they need to continue to focus on training. Training tough, training smart, training hard. Because although we have a diminished threat, uh, I think the threat is still there and we need to understand that. And I think the soldiers need to understand that. Uh, I think we need to tell our soldiers they need to continue to um, pursue their military education, their civilian education. I think it's important that you need to keep yourself competitive uh, for both retention and promotion. As you heard uh, uh, most of the commanders say so far, the Army is downsizing and we're only going to keep the best. Very competitive in that respect. Uh, the Commander-in-Chief, General Saint, is going to keep us all informed. Uh, he has done uh, well at that so far. He's got the welfare of our soldiers and, and their families uh, in the, foremost in his mind. Uh, he has not let us down yet. He will not let us down uh, now or in the future. Um, I would probably say the last thing I wanna, uh, I'd want to say is uh, to all those young soldiers out there, if you want to stay in a professional army, if you want to, uh, uh, to face the challenge of the future, you've got to make yourself good, you've got to make yourself tough, you make yourself hard because we're only going to keep the best. And that's all the way around. All Everything. skills. That's, that's correct. Thanks, Sergeant Major. General, with the conventional forces uh, talks going on, and if the agreement is signed and the reductions do, in fact, take place, what will life be like here in USER? Are we going to be uh, bands and flags? Is that, the, is that the future? No, I would think you, you said the one uh, sort of sentence that would cause me to set my hair on fire, <laughs> and that we are not a parade army. Uh, we're a war fighting army and we uh, know how to do our job well and so i think it comes down to uh, the army in europe will mirror the rest of the army it will be smaller it will be quality the training tempo will stay the same maybe even get any better get better as we go along with that it will be a modern army and i think it will be a lethal army and so those are the magic ingredients of how it's going to be in you sir uh, we will be spread out a little bit more we intend as we go through this process to fix things that we all know are broken or aren't doing well. And so I'm very optimistic. I'm looking forward to doing this as an opportunity. I've been here over 12 years as serving in the United States Army in Europe, and I have a long memory on things that are bothering some of the soldiers down the bottom. And with these good commanders here, I want to assure all our soldiers out there that we're working very hard to do this smart and to do it right and to protect each soldier and to allow each individual to make the choice on what they want to do. But the bottom line is, we're going to have a quality army. We're going to have to see who can measure up and who's going to stay, because it's going to be a great time. And on that note, we'll, uh, we'll finish this program. General Singh, thank you for joining us, as well as the commanders. Thank you very much. Sergeant Major Horvath, thank you. Your Update is a production of AFN.